Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you some useful features in Microsoft Excel. These are pretty simple but honestly are going to save you so much time and just make your lives a little bit easier by using them. And these aren't super basic features, they're a little bit of a step above basic I would say. So if you're looking for a list of what I'll be going over, there's a list in the description box along with timestamps of when I will be discussing each feature. And I know Excel can be pretty daunting if you are new to it or even if you just don't use it very often because honestly there are an endless amount of things that you can do with it. But these are things that I find helpful for my everyday life in terms of budgeting, tracking expenses, things like that. So hopefully you find these tips helpful as well. And I will also be including screen recordings of a Mac with today's video so that you can actually follow along while I'm showing you everything. The first feature I'm going to talk about today is autofill and autofill can start out pretty simple but can sometimes get a little bit tricky. So in my example today let's just say that I am making a sheet of sales and profits at a produce market. So maybe you only sell apples on the first bananas on the second, cherries on the third, and so on and so forth. So if you do it that way, it's pretty easy. You just go to this little X right here until it turns black instead of the white and drag down to where you want it to end on the 10th. So that is one way to do autofill if you're going to have everything be in chronological order. You can also just double click and it will fill down until the last line that you have data inputted into already. But say you are selling, like most places, you're probably selling all of these on the same day. So if you're trying to, instead of copy and paste or type in the date again every single time, what you can do is drag it down or double click and before you exit out of here while it's still highlighted if you do command D it will fill exactly what was in the first cell to begin with. Now we can move over to numbers in this column right here. If you try to do the same thing it's just going to autofill the same number all the way down because for dates generally it knows it's going to go in a chronological order but for numbers you have to give Excel an idea of the sequence that you want to complete. So for example if you want it to go in increments of one you have to show them that then highlight it and then it knows what sequence to produce. If the series that you want isn't just increments of one, you can go to this area right here, this fill area, drop down and click series, and you can make custom series. So you can tell it to step value by one or two, let's see, and it goes every other. Or maybe you want everything to multiply by three you can do that as well. And you can do the same thing for dates. So maybe your store is only open every other day. You can do step value by two and it will pop up every other day instead of every day. Another thing you may wanna do is change the date format. So maybe you wanted to say 01-01-2020 instead of just 1120. You can go to this area right here and click the drop down and there are two default dates that Excel gives you short and long but if you go into more number formats you can see that there are a lot more options but the option that I want isn't here so what I'm going to do is go to custom and I want to have a two digit month a two digit day in a four digit year and you can see what the sample will look like 
at the top and then you click OK. And now if you want the rest of your dates to do that, you can either highlight the whole column and go back to your custom number format. Or you can just copy this right here, highlight what you want to paste, but obviously we want to paste just the format. We don't want everything to say January 1st. So if you go to the paste area and click the drop down, you want to click paste formatting. So it will format all the dates the same, but not just copy and paste 1-1-2020. Now, if we move into the price column, obviously I want these to come up as dollars. So Microsoft makes it pretty easy since they do already have a shortcut for that. So you can just highlight the column and then go to dollars or there are different types of currencies and more if you need. But if you just click the dollar sign, it'll put everything in dollars, which is very simple. Now let's talk about some useful formulas. So if I want to multiply my amount purchased by my price per item to find out my profits, what I'm going to do is click equals. And that's going to tell Excel that we're starting a formula. Then you're going to click on the first cell that you want to multiply. And for multiplication, you're going to click the asterisk. If you want division, you do a forward slash. If you want plus, you do a plus. And if you want minus, you do a minus. We're going to go ahead and do multiplication on these two columns right here. And then I'm going to click on this next cell, which I want to multiply, and then click Enter. Now, if I want to autofill the rest of this column to do the same formula in each row, I can do that by double clicking and autofilling the way we did earlier. And you'll see here that some of these bottom numbers are just all pound signs because that means they're too big to fit inside of their cells. So the way to fix that is to just go to the top of the column. And once you hover between two columns, you'll see this pop up. If you double click, it'll automatically change the width of the column to what the largest cell is and make sure that you can see everything in that column. And you can even do that to condense columns as well. So for example, if I want this one to be a little bit smaller since we have some dead space right here, I can just click and it'll make it just as wide as the price per item header. Now there's also a great formula if you want to just add up an entire column right away and it's auto sum, which is right over here. So all you have to do is highlight the data you want to add up, click auto sum, and it'll automatically add it up for you. And obviously we need to make the width of the column bigger like we did before to see that very large number. Another pain point in Excel is that they actually drop leading zeros of some numbers. So for example, I know this happens with zip codes. Since some zip codes start with one zero or two zeros, if you try to type in a zip code that starts with zeros, it'll automatically get rid of those zeros and just condense the number. So the way you can fix that is actually by starting the number with an apostrophe and then typing the number that you want and it will keep the zeros that way. It's going to give you a little message that says the number is stored as text, but that's okay. It will still work with any number formulas or math that you want to do with it if for some reason you did want to add up anything with leading zeros. Now I'm going to show you some keyboard shortcuts for hiding rows and columns. So say you want to just see the date and profits side by side without this information in between. What you can do is highlight those columns and do command zero to hide them quickly. And then to unhide them, you just highlight the outside and do shift command zero to bring them back. And then for rows, let's say you want to just view data starting on the 13th and you want to hide all of this leading up. You do command nine for rows, whereas columns was command zero. And then if you want to bring them back, 
you just highlight the outside of that section again and do Command Shift 9 to bring the rows back into view. Now I'm going to show you how to freeze rows and columns. So this is especially helpful if you have a sheet that's filled with data so that you can't always see the header. So I'm just going to expand our data for this example to maybe to row 42. So now if I'm scrolled down to February, I can't see the header anymore. So maybe you can't remember what was in column D. And instead of having to scroll all the way back up, what you can do is actually freeze the header by going to view and freezing the top row. That way when you scroll down, you can always see what information is in each column, no matter how far you scroll down. To unfreeze, you just click unfreeze. And you can also do the same thing with columns. So if I wanna freeze date, and say I had information going all the way over here, what I want to do is click the column directly to the right of date and click freeze panes because that will freeze anything to the left. So this way when I scroll sideways, I can see the date no matter how far across I go. And then again to unfreeze, you just click unfreeze. I'll end this video with something simple but again very useful for big tables which is just a keyboard shortcut to highlight data. So instead of using your mouse to scroll all the way down to the end of your table or your section, what you can do is use Command, Shift, and then the Down key to highlight all the way to the bottom of your section, which is helpful if you have hundreds of rows of data. And you can do the same thing with your rows by just doing Command, Shift, and then the right key arrow key. And then if you're highlighted in your rows, you can keep holding down command shift and then click the down arrow and then highlight your entire range of data quickly with just a keyboard shortcut. So that's it for today, you guys. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up right below this video and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!